what's the role of numerical simulation in all of this? Sort of, I guess, ahead of time, uh, how much numerical simulation are you doing to understand how the system is going to behave, how the different parameters all come together, uh, the, the electrical system, and how that all maps to the, 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 the fusion that's actually generated? Yeah, the operation of a fusion system is is pretty fascinating because all of this happens on a time scale where human operators cannot be in, mm. cannot really be involved, um, and so uh, you have to have pre programmed the majority. We call them shots. You're going to do a shot, and when you're operating them repetitively and you're running long periods of times, you still have all computers doing both the triggering and the op and the measuring of of how they're performing real time the whole time. Um, and so, um, how this typically works, at least in our systems, is that we will design a system with a combination of, with, with some numerical simulation tools that we, we've developed based off of decades and decades of amazing government programs. National lab programs developed these numerical codes. Um, we use a kind of a code called an MHD, Magneto Hydrodynamic Code. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, for people, for the engineers out there um, who are used to CFD, uh, computational fluid dynamics, this is very similar. You take the same sets of equations, actually, and add the electromagnetic equations on top of those. And so you get magneto hydrodynamic. Are you simulating at the level of a particle? Is there some qu quantum mechanical aspects to this also? Does, how low does it go? Yeah, we have multiple codes at different levels um, because one of the, the main computational challenges is... Um, Amazingly, even given all that we are have been have built for fusion systems, computers are still not fast enough to measure to simulate everything. Um, and so we have uh, a number of codes that we use. Um, one we call fluid codes, where you treat the ions, the electrons, all these fusion particles, you treat them as as fluids, as gases, mm -hmm. ideal gas law with electromagnetic forces. In those, we can simulate not just the fu fusion fuel, which is important, but all of the electrical circuitry. We talked about capacitors and magnetic coils and the electrical current and the switches. Well, we actually simulate the full thing, starting literally with the SPICE model, uh, more of that electrical engineering. We start with the SPICE model and use that to drive the plasma physics model. And that's one level of simulation. We use that to do design work and then also to try to understand how we think the machine will run. But then we go one level deeper and we start thinking about particles and we think about the ions and we treat the ions as particles and we look at the ion behavior. And for that one, the computational resources are several orders of magnitude larger. Uh, luckily, a lot of the work in GPUs, the AI data center work, is directly applicable to those simulations. It's been able to speed up our work, which is pretty fascinating. Um, that's a whole nother tangent we can go down. Those hybrid codes, we call them, particle and cell codes, uh, now treat the ions as particles. And that lets us measure and, and simulate the behavior. I mentioned the stability criteria, S star over E, the top behavior. That behavior, we now need these more advanced codes to be able to simulate. And those are more modern. Those we've only been able to apply in practice for the last few years, actually, which is pretty fascinating. Um, that the old stability rules were built off of testing, empirical tests, where now we can simulate that and we know why they work and how they work and we can do some predictions on them. And so that's really fascinating that we've been able to push those boundaries. And w what are the different variables you're playing with? Are you still playing with like topology? Like what are the different variables in, in play here? Yeah. Each of the different simulations we analyze and use it to design different parts of the machine. So at the MHD level, where we have the spike, where we actually have the circuit model. Now we, uh, our design team uses this to design the circuitry, where we're designing which capacitor to use, which switch to use, uh, how many cables to use, literally to that level, how big of a cable to use. Uh, so as we're doing power plant designs right now, those are the tools we're using today, every day, the team is using. Then you can go one level deeper and say, okay, let's use these more advanced computational tools to about stability to say, okay, great, but I now know the circuitry, but let's look at the magnetic field topology. How do I design the magnet, the shape of the magnet exactly, the timing of the magnet exactly? I have to trigger one magnet and the next magnet next to it and the next magnet next to it. How do I have that shape and uh, that, that design? And so that's where you're using those more advanced tools. Now those, unfortunately, those are still 
too slow. And so those simulations may take a day or two to run. And so a data, an operator right now does a lot of simulations ahead of time, then collects data uh, through their, their operations of the machines, making these field reverse configurations, going through parameter sweeps. And then the simulation team then goes back and looks at that data and, and compares it with simulations. Um, I'm really excited about some of the things we're seeing in artificial intelligence and reinforced learning to be able to speed up that process. And so I'm, I'm, we're watching and starting to work on that now of can we now, rather than using it where we use it today, where we do a simulation to design a machine or a test, run the test, and then over the next couple of days, compare the testing with the simulation and use that to inform what we're going to run for the next set of tests. But in fact, do it more real time where you're now an operator can pull up what the AI or what the, the machine learning would have predicted it should have done. And then use that to understand what's happening in in the actual programs and the actual generators themselves.